Hey there, everyone else. Flute Lance. Oh, God, that was cheesy. Um, I just wanted to talk to you for a few minutes about this instrument that I'm holding. I've been meaning to make this video for several weeks, and I just haven't gotten around to it. I've been busy on tour, and I wanted to do it in one of the theaters, but I never have gotten a chance to. Um, it's just the schedules and everything. So I just want to spend a few minutes talking about this wonderful discovery that I made back in December. So I was in Richmond, Virginia performing uh, with a tour of a show, and there was a flute festival being held just a few blocks from the theater. So I went uh, with a colleague of mine, um, who's also a big flute nerd, and there were three tables that I went to, three exhibitors. The Flute Pro Shop, uh, which was a wonderful experience. Um, the Flute Pro Shop is run by the phenomenal and amazing Joan Sparks. Uh, FluteProShop.com, check them out. Uh, Nagahara had a table. Um, they only had three flutes, but oh my god, they were amazing. And then Betsy Winslow Trimber, who owns a shop called the Flutist's Fair in Alexandria, Virginia, had a table. And her table was huge. She had dozens and dozens of flutes and had joints and piccolos. And, like, it was like the ultimate candy shop. And most of what everyone had was stuff that I'm very familiar with and have played thousands of, probably, you know, Haynes and Powell's and Muramatsu's and Miyazawa's and Burkhardt's and, you know, all that sort of stuff. Um, and I like it all. They're all fantastic flutes. There actually aren't really any, any flutes in the, the intermediate professional and up category that I really dislike. So, you know, it was a good time. Um, but I, I came across this instrument and it, it's sort of unusual for me to have, to have not tried something. So I saw this instrument and I thought, have not tried this yet. I recognize the name. Um, Bernard Kamig is a very well-known German flute maker who makes the most unbelievable handmade uh, high purity silver, wood, and solid gold flutes you have ever seen. And he recently has partnered with an American flute player named Jason Blank, who for many years was the product manager for Haynes Flutes. Um, he's a wonderful, wonderful flutist in his own right, clinician, awesome guy, like really, really great guy. And they teamed up and they created this flute called the Mezzo, the Bernard Comic Mezzo. And it's it fits in that niche with, um, you know, say the the Haynes Classic Q series, the Q1, 2, 3, 4, um, the Burkhardt Resina, the, maybe the Powell Sonare, but more like, the, well, I don't know, probably the Sonare, the, it's higher quality than Sonare, but it's that sort of, you know, very high quality, uh, factory manufactured, hand finished body with a completely handmade head joint. So, gave it, picked it up, you know, it had the stock head on it, uh, gave it a blow, the stock head, I think, was 94.5% uh, silver with the gold riser. And it was great. And the mechanism feels very solid. It's beautifully made. Very, very beautifully made. Um, and I really, really liked it. And so Betsy said, if you like that flu, why don't you put one of those two head joints on it? And she pointed out these two handmade custom Bernard Homig head joints. Um, one of them was 9 karat gold. And it was the reddest 9 karat gold I've ever seen. It was stunningly beautiful, and I put it on this flute, uh, and then I put it on every other flute at the table. Like, it was, wow, it was just one of the most unbelievable head joints, and if you have $4,000, buy one. Um, and then I tried this head joint, um, and they were so sweet. I reviewed all of these flutes on my blog, uh, which I'll link to. You should totally read it, because it's fun. Um, and I just drooled, I raved about this flute, this head joint. So... Betsy and Jason were kind enough to send me this instrument, and they sent it to me with this head joint, um, which is a 15% gold, 85% alloy head joint. Um, the only other maker on the planet that uses this alloy is uh, Brandon LeFan. Um, LeFan makes a 15% gold head joint, Brandon makes a 15% gold body. No one else, no one else does it. Um, and it works out to like 3.6 karat gold, something like that. I don't know if you can see, it actually is a slightly different color than the body. Um, I mean, it's not obviously gold, but it's, it's a little different. It almost sort of, compared to the silver, looks like platinum. Um, but I put this head joint on and oh my god, you guys, it was, it was, it was like, I'd never experienced the flute before. The color palette 
with this head joint is huger than anything I've ever experienced. I've always, since I was a senior in high school, I have always played Japanese flutes. I've always played either a Sankyo, a Muramatsu, or an Altus. Although I did briefly play for about a year, I played a Powell, and it was a great flute, but we weren't, we didn't get along. Um, but I found a perfect match for it. You know, a lot of people can't play anything but a Powell, uh, not only those people. So I've always played the Japanese flutes, and the Japanese flutes generally have a very free-blowing um, ease of playing, huge, huge sound, because they're very, the stock head joints tend to be very square and very undercut and overcut and, you know, just giant, beautiful, but very, very open instruments. Um, so you can just move a colossal column of air, which I do, because I use a lot of air when I play, because I'm a big guy. So I pick this up, and the first thing I notice is that the embouchure hole is, you can see that, is a little rounder than I'm used to. It's much more in the tradition of the, the early Haynes flutes. Um, you know, they're sort of the golden age of Haynes, like when Ram Paul was playing Haynes. And so you get that very controlled, sweet, pretty sound, but Jason has cut these head joints so that you can get that modern American orchestral sound out of them. But it doesn't have, I don't want to say that the, the rectangular cuts that most people play on, but I'm certainly used to playing on, um, lack personality, but there's a, there's a character that I find in this head joint that I don't find in those. But there's also much more power than you can get from those old midget chains and, you know, Louis Lots and all that sort of thing. So I was playing this, playing it, playing it, playing it, and couldn't put it down. So I took this head joint and I put it on a bunch of other bodies. I put it on... Um, a Burkhart 595, 5% platinum, 95% silver body, put it on, which was, wow, put it on a, uh, put it on a Miyazawa uh, Vision 95.8% silver body, put it on a Burkhart 998 silver body, put it on a Burkhart 14 karat flute. Every flute I put this on, it, it improved, it changed drastically. It's like, you know, I switched from the the box of, of 12 Crayolas to 64. Like it was just a huge expansion in color palette. And I was really, really taken with this instrument, so I was talking to Betsy about it. Um, the price point on these is unbelievable. This flute, the Model M1, which is the, the model that I have here, the Bernard Homig Mezzo M1, um, it's, a, it's an alloy body that's plated in silver, so it's not sterling. Um, and it comes standard with a 94.5% silver handmade Homig custom head joint. $29.95, so under $3,000, it's, it's unreal, it's just unreal. Uh, and then the M2 has a sterling body with drawn tone holes, and the M3 has sterling with soldered tone holes. Um, and you can get C-Sharp Pro, or a D-Sharp Roller, or a Spody. Um Ultimately, I'm, I'm going to order one with the C-Sharp Trail, because it's, I've always had one, and it's sort of like a, you know, an integral part of my technique now. Um, but I just I couldn't believe the price on these. So I went home and I wrote this really long blog post, sort of recapping everything that happened at the fair. Um, and I just could not write enough enthusiastic things about this instrument because I really feel that this instrument is totally a game changer in the intermediate priced flute world. Because in that, you know, three to six thousand dollar range, you can totally get a flute that is totally serviceable for any professional. I mean, I make my living playing the flute. I travel all over North America and, and the world playing. And, you know, I'm going to be in Japan for six weeks this summer performing. And I really, really rely on my instruments, you know, because I play every day. Like, since I've had this flute, I've played it on average in front of 2,000 people eight times a week, you know. And so I need an instrument that when I pick it up, it will give me everything I want right when I want it. Um, and this one does. You know, it's, it blends beautifully. The scale is great. It's always very in tune. Um, I, can, I can come out of a texture or sink into a texture if I need to because the color palette is so broad. Um, and this instrument, I, I highly, highly urge all of you out there who are doublers to check these out because you'll be very hard-pressed to find a better instrument in this price point. And high school, very advanced high school flute players, you know, who are on a conservatory track, you're winning contests, you're principal in your local youth, your youth orchestra, you know, you're, you're doing the NFA competitions, and, and 
you can't really afford 15, 20, 25, 40, 45, 70 thousand dollars for, you know, a handmade gold, platinum, whatever flute. And you, but you need something that sounds like that. This instrument is it. The only thing that I think comes close to this in this price range is the Burkhardt Resina and the Haynes Classic. It's, it's just a no contest. But the, it, this is so different from those because both of those you're getting that big, awesome, great orchestral American flute sound. But with this, you are getting so much more than that. You get that sound. You can also do, you know, you can get that beautiful Jean-Pierre Rampal, early 20th century French pretty flute sound thing. Um, it, it almost sounds like a traverso sometimes. It's just spectacular. Uh, so really, if you are looking for a new flute, check it out. I'm going to put all of the website information down in the info box underneath the video. Uh, so check it out. Please check out the website. Um, ask them to send you one of these flutes. Go to the flute fairs near you. Try these flutes. Um, come to NFA this year in New Orleans. I won't be here sadly. I'll be in Japan performing. But please stop by the Bernard Homic table. Talk to Jason Blank and try these flutes because they're to die for. Even just the crown, the, um, all of the head joints come with what they call the magic crown. And on any head joint you put this on, you will notice an immediate increase in your color palette, the control that you have, your dynamic range, um, the density of your sound, your projection. It's like, spectacular. I know a lot of uh, professional flutists who are using the magic crowns on their instruments. Um, they're just, it's, it makes a huge difference, and they're spectacular. So I'm just going to play this instrument a little bit for you, just so you can hear um, a little bit of what I get out of it, and, and the sound that it gives to me, and hopefully you will, you will find out for yourself what you can do with the Bernard Hovig Mezzo flute. It's the ideal 
the ideal principal flute is um, instrument. This head joint, my gosh. You guys, it's amazing.